Hello! Welcome to a special uh, on the channel here. Uh, this is not a game uh, of us playing Munchkin. As you might have noticed, I don't have an opponent right now. But uh, this is an unboxing video of Munchkin Warhammer 40k. Uh, I am a fan of Warhammer. I have been for a while. I don't play 40k myself. I play uh, Fantasy, uh, which is turned into Age of Sigmar. Uh, I haven't actually played Age of Sigmar yet. I'm still stuck in 8th edition because I, I like those rules and I like the uh, the armies that I have and I don't have multiple thousands of dollars to spend on a new army right now. So uh, this is from Steve Jackson Games and Games Workshop combined, uh, illustrated by John Kovalik, and who is very passionate about Warhammer as well. Um, if you get a chance, check out his Twitter, uh, Muskrat John, on Twitter. Um, check out mine while you're at it. I'm at Malcap Man. I'll put the just I'll put the uh, links to those in the description at the bottom here. But I'm going to unbox this. Then I'm going to go through off camera and pick out some of my favorite cards, and then I will come back and tell you what they are, and I will tell you what the uh, I think the, there are alliances in this one, uh, instead of races and classes like in regular Munchkin. And I'll uh, show off some of my favorites of those. And, uh, first of all, it comes with a game board. Ta-da! This is the deluxe edition. I'm sure the regular edition will come out later, but I like having the game boards. You might have noticed in some of the other episodes that I have... Uh, Moops Magical Mess... I have Munchkin Shakespeare because of the Kickstarter, obviously, it came with a game board. Um, Steampunk. What are the other ones? A couple others have game boards that... Uh, uh, Starfinder. Starfinder has a game board because Kickstarter again. Um, so I have game boards for a few of them. Um, they're all pretty much the same. They go from 1 to 10 and they have art from the game on there. So uh, we have a game board with this one because it is a deluxe, which means it also comes with the uh, character standees, uh, two of each color, one male, one female, and I'll just show you the uh, yellow ones here, and it's the same in all the colors, and rule book, and then the cards in two uh, sealed packages. I have not opened them yet, so I haven't looked at them, so you'll, it'll, it also comes with a die which another Munchkin head die to go in the bag to roll sevens with. So uh, I am going to uh, open these, I'm going to look at the cards, and then I'll come back and uh, show you some of my favorites. So I'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm back. I've gone through all the cards, I've picked out some of my favorites, as well as all of the different army cards. Uh, Alliance means you can have two armies. Um, all of the different army cards, I'm going to read the powers on those because everybody can get them, and I like them, so, you know, that's neat. And all of the uh, monster enhancers, I just like the names of those, and the, uh, like, combining from breaking the fourth wall, basically, so from being in the Warhammer world to knowing that it's all miniatures and painting. And that's you got... Move, you go. Move, you gone. <laughs> There's cats wandering around. Long-time viewers will know this. But uh, some of my favorites in the uh, treasures are the Laz Cannon, because it says Orc Be Gone on it, which is harkens back to the original Munchkin, where that was written on the Chainsaw of Bloody Dismemberment, so I thought I'd feature that a little bit. Uh, the Psych Out Grenade, which is the... Uh, Flea Powder, or uh, Potion of Cowardice of this set, so because it makes the other person run away. It makes the person in combat run away, so I like that a lot. The <laughs> Plasma Grenade, because I like the art. It's a bag of plasma. Uh, that is funny. And because I play Orcs in Warhammer Fantasy, I play Orcs and Goblins. Uh, that's my main army. And I had to highlight the MORDAKA! because it can always have more dark. And the clave, 
which if you have this makes you Captain Clave Man. I had to make that joke. Tank, if you're watching this, that joke was just for you. Uh, from the doors, the, the requisition <clears throat> it says, play when you're in combat, you may take an item from an opponent and use its bonuses for yourself regardless of any restrictions that would otherwise apply. After the combat, that opponent gets the item back even if you discarded it. That's not the reason that I chose it. The art is hilarious. It's an ultramarine in power armor stealing a spatula because he needs it for the combat. I love that. <laughs> and then uh, on the other side is a, is a sad orc because no more Daka. I, he's just so sad. And I had I had to highlight that. And then uh, the, the, the curse left your terrain at home. I like that because uh, we've had to use random items as terrain in some of our Warhammer games before. Uh, I believe at one point we had the Munchkin Bobblehead as the uh, as a magical uh, statue of some sort. Uh, I believe it was the idol of Mork and or Gork uh, as appropriate. Uh, so, and uh, I think we had a cribbage board as a as a hill. Uh, so we have had to use uh, creative makeshift terrain in our games before. So that that one really spoke to me. Uh, the monster enhancers. I just like the names on all these because some of them break the fourth wall. Unpainted, minus five to monster. Uh, spiky, because. Sometimes you have bits and you just have to put them on there. Uh, modded, because uh, Tank has painted all of my Warhammer models, and some of them have been modified, uh, including my Doom Wheel, which was nicknamed the Stabby Car. And uh, so, modded re really, uh, really highlights that. Uh, infused with Chaos! Plus five to Monster. Uh, proxied, which we've all proxied models in our Warhammer games before. Sometimes you just don't have the WYSIWYG to do it. And uh, Grimdark, plus 10 to Monster. Gotta love those. Now, on to the armies. Uh, there are six different armies. I guess that's filling in for the fact that there aren't two uh, different descriptors that you can have, like, you know, in originally you have races and classes, uh, in bytes you have uh, races and powers, uh, in uh, uh, Pathfinder you have factions and classes, uh, stuff like that. So, with all of those, uh, there was only like four. So, with this, there are six different armies that you can have, and I will read them out. Uh, first is the Ultramarine. <clears throat> uh, look to your war gear. Armor worn by an Ultramarine gets an extra plus two in combat. Pretty straightforward. Uh, no, no fear. An Ultramarine who fails a runaway roll can choose death instead of the printed bad stuff for that monster. That could actually come in handy pretty early in the game if you got if you got uh, like three walls, an ultramarine card, and like a couple of one-shots, or a one-shot, because that would be the other treasure, but there's a, and a couple of useless cards, you just like fight against something that you're obviously going to fail at, and it has stupid bad stuff, and you go, no, I'll just die, and then you draw new stuff on the, uh, on the next turn. That can actually be useful, plus you get to keep your ultramarine card, because you keep your army if you die. Uh, Tyranid, this one I like. Bread for war. If a Tyranid draws a monster, when looting the room, it may immediately reveal it and fight that monster. Love it. And Biomorph. A Tyranid may attach a single one-shot to this card as a permanent combat bonus for itself. It may replace this card only when it goes up a level and loses it upon death or losing this, this army. So... If you are a in a mixed game with all of the decks put together, or just this invites, if you're a Tyranid Werewolf, you can put a Monster Enhancer on yourself, 
and one shot on yourself, both for permanent bonus. And you still don't have any, like, items. <laughs> and you could have, like, I don't know, 15, 20 in bonuses. Uh, the Necron, which negates some some really heavy stuff. Uh, a curse that causes a Necron to lose a specific item type, armor, headgear, vehicle, etc. Uh, merely negates that item's bonuses and abilities for the current turn. He doesn't actually lose it. He gets it back next turn. That's awesome. And Resurrection. Necrons treat any death result as discard three cards. Which, I guess you could combine with the Ultramarine thing. If you get an Alliance card, you can have both. And you just turn any bad stuff into lose three cards. Which, granted, three cards is a lot. But still, if it saves your highest bonus item, or you know, something else that could be game-changing, then more power to you. Uh, Death Guard! Contagion. Contagion. When a Death Guard is affected by a curse, except as a result of another Contagion ability, or one that already affects everyone, all other players must roll a die. Anyone rolling a 1 or less is also affected. This won't come into play much in our games because we have the bag of Munchkin Head Dice. So, you can't really roll a 1 unless you draw badly because there's like half a dozen dice in there that you can roll a 1 on. So, meh. But the other power, uh, Traitorous, once per turn, when a Death Guard plays a one-shot to help the monsters, they can draw a face-up treasure to replace it. That's pretty cool. That That's worth it right there. Uh, Eldari. Ancient Doom. An Eldari gets a plus three bonus when fighting at least one Chaos Monster. The stacking effects in this game are Undead, obviously, and Chaos. So, the... Uh, 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 fighting against Chaos, you get a plus three bonus. And uh, Perfidious Elder. When an Eldari is helping in combat, they can give the main player two cards and back out of the fight. The main player may ask for the remaining players for help. So you just go, oh, we're losing now. Here's two cards. Leets. <laughs> that can be mean. And, of course, Orc. Uh, brutal. An Orc has a combat bonus equal to twice the total number of Orcs in the game could be useful. Uh, it's kind of the uh, uh, cultist thing. So in a mixed game, you could be a cultist orc, and for every other cultist orc out there, you get a pretty uh, hefty bonus. And then uh, cunning. An orc that wins a combat by ten or more points goes up an extra level, which can be the winning level. That's the thing, though. This is an army, and there's also the race of orc in regular Munchkin, which has one of the same powers. So if you win... A, a combat by more than 10 because the orc race says more than 10 this says 10 or more but if you win it by more than 10 and you're an orc 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 you could go up two extra levels that potted plant could be worth three levels if somebody beats it up you know and so or, uh, no the potted plant because if you're winning by more than 10 so yeah blah. so if you're winning by more than 10, that pot of play could be worth 3 levels. And that's insane. So, that that was uh, that was the highlights from here. Uh, go ahead and get this set. It's pretty fun looking. Uh, all of the monsters are cool. Um, a lot of them are pretty straightforward, and some of them I just straight up can't pronounce. So, I didn't really highlight any of the monsters. They have a lot of uh, pretty good bad stuff. Uh, it's pretty standard as far as bad stuff goes. A little bit of uh, uh, variation here and there. But uh, pr pretty much just straightforward monsters. Uh, bonuses against blah, bad stuff. You know, good things like that. There are a bit more of the high-level monsters, the uh, uh, two-level and four or five treasure monsters in there, so that could be interesting when the game comes along. So uh, be on the lookout for an episode where we actually play this game. Um, and we will see you then. So, until next time, be sure to like, share, favorite, subscribe, pay it forward, send us money, be excellent to each other, and we'll see you next time.